In this video we're going to be looking at the thermal calculations required to work out whether or not you're going to need a heat sink for your power device. And this device could be a FET or it could be, in this case, a voltage regulator. What we need to do is first define what we're interested in. In this case it's what's known as thermal resistance. So the thermal resistance, given by the symbol here theta, between two points divided by the power dissipated across that device and that's given in degrees C per watt. So the thermal resistance basically states the resistance for heat to be transferred through a medium and we can quantify that in terms of the difference between the temperatures in two points divided by the power dissipated i.e. the amount of power generating that heat measured in degrees C per watt. And the way that we usually describe this now if we were to take for example a device such as a let's say TO220 package like I've got down here so I'm just drawing the side view of this package here All right inside the middle of this we'll have the silicon which I'm going to draw in blue in here and that's the part that we refer to as the junction from there we have a small insulating layer normally between that and, I'm going to draw it in red, our heat sink, okay, which will have, possibly have some fins in it as well. All right, so this is our uh, electrically isolating tab, or maybe some heat sink compound. Okay, but something that sits between package itself, okay, so this is a TO220, uh, let's say it's a voltage regulator, and our heat sink. Now the way that we can describe the heat flow, so all the heat has been generated at this junction, generates the heat, and this guy dissipates the heat. All the heat flow is going from that junction and it's going in all directions but most of it is going to be coming through here and then out into the area we call ambient. And the way that we can model this in terms of the resistances for heat transfer is we can actually model this as three resistances in series. Oh, that's not a very good resistor. Where at this point here is the junction. This point here is the case. This point here is what we call the sink, short for heat sink and then this point here again is ambient. So we have three resistances so from junction to case is this little bit here. From case to sink is this tiny little green bit here and then from sink sorry from sink to ambient which is across our heat sink out to ambient. And so these three thermal resistances are named junction to case, in fact I should get my theta symbol correct, from case to sink and from sink to ambient. So we have three thermal resistances modeling each of the resistances within this thermal circuit, not electrical circuit but thermal circuit. And in this case we have thermal resistance between the junction and the outside of the case of our IC, which is this guy here, between the case okay, and the heat sink itself. Now this could be this electrically isolating tab, or it could be the heat sink compound. All right, but That's a different material with a different boundary layer, which gives us a different heat or thermal resistance. And then we have resistance from the heat sink, heat's now in this heat sink, through and then out into the ambient. So we also have 
this third heatsink. And I can write an equation, theta from junction to ambient, the total thermal resistance, just like if these were resistors, would be theta JC plus theta CS plus theta SA. So we would get the total of the thermal resistances by this one parameter here, JA. And if we relate it back to this equation that we have up here, we could say that theta JA is also equal to the temperature at deduction minus the temperature ambient divided by the power dissipated by this device. All right, so we have two definitions for theta JA, one based on the definition of thermal resistance and one based on the fact that we can model this system as a series of thermal resistances. Each one of these could be substituted into this equation and solved for if we needed to. So that's thermal resistance. These are the two basic equations that we're going to need to use. And these are the names, heat case sink or heat sink and ambient that you're going to need to be familiar with. So let's have a look at a component where this would apply to. So for example here we've got a Texas Instruments uh, voltage regulator. It's in a TO220 package, which is a nice and common one. Okay, we see we can supply one amp with that. But we won't find anywhere under the maximum ratings no peak max. Okay, it's very unlikely that you'll actually see that in a package. And that's because while you can predict the junction temperature, this equation is dependent on the amount of heat sinking. Okay, so this guy here, as well as the ambient temperature. So rather than just saying, well, if it was 30 degrees and with this heat sink, this is the maximum power you can dissipate, they instead give you the maximum junction temperature, which is this point here. Okay, so maximum junction temperature being this quantity here, junction temperature, and they give you, for noting we're interested in the TO220 package, not the other ones, the thermal resistance from junction to case, so they give us this guy, and they give us the thermal resistance from junction to ambient. So they also give us this though. So the way that we can use this is that we can say, right, if with no heat sink, right, the only, only thermal resistance in this thermal circuit around our regulator here, looking back up to this diagram here, if we've got no heat sink and no tear behind it, then the only thermal resistance is from junction to ambient. Okay, so this is no heat sink. In which case, we can say then, well, we can rearrange this formula, and we could then say, well, the junction temperature is equal to, uh, let's say, thermal resistance from junction to ambient times the power dissipated plus T ambient. Okay, so we could solve for the maximum junction temperature and therefore we can compare that with the maximum. So for a given power dissipation, a given ambient temperature, and the specified thermal resistance given to us by the manufacturer, we could solve for that. We could also flip it around and say, well, for a safe maximum junction temperature, let's say 100 degrees, what's the maximum power I can dissipate across this device? Or a range of, of interesting things that we can do with it. But... They also give us this parameter here, which is the junction to case, this guy up here. So for that device, it is actually equal to 4. Common number for case to sink, a sort of worst case scenario is 2. So then that could leave us to then finding a surface to ambient thermal resistance for a suitable heat sink. So we can use these numbers to either work out, for example, the maximum junction temperature or power dissipated with no heat sink, or for a given junction temperature, power dissipation, we can work out what's a required heat sink for this device. So let's have a look how we do that. So here is an example. I've got 9 volt regulator. Okay, this is just a wall plug pack. And that's going to be supplying 9 volts DC to our 5 volt regulator, this guy up here, 
which is then going to be regulating that down to 5 volts DC at 0 0.8 amps, all right, for our embedded circuit. So first calculation that I might do is to work out, well, do I need a heatsink for this? So let's take the worst case, okay? Worst case equals no heatsink. And I'm saying the worst case with respect to the poor old voltage regulator I see. The best case for us is no heatsink because then we don't have to buy one or worry about mounting it. The worst case for the IC, however, is with no heatsink. So let's substitute the values we know into this equation here. Okay, so I'll write it again. Theta JA is equal to the temperature difference between the junction and ambient divided by the power dissipated. And we can rearrange that and say that TJ minus TA is equal to theta JA times PD. And then obviously TJ temperature at the junction is equal to the thermal resistance times power dissipated plus the ambient temperature. So we know at this point that theta JA is this value here, 60, from the data sheet. We know, let's say we take a worst case scenario that the ambient temperature is 30. The one that we need to calculate is this value here, PD. Now the easiest way to do that is power dissipated equals the voltage dropped across the FET, uh, FET or in this case the voltage regulator times the current. So in this case it's going to be 9 minus 5 volts, 9 volts in, 5 volts out, times 0 0.8 which gives us 4 times 0 0.8 which equals 3.2 watts. So we can substitute 3.2 in here. And if we do that calculation, and let me just grab a calculator, we get 60 times 3.2 plus 30, we get 222 degrees centigrade. Straight away, this is our junction temperature. Remember our junction? Silicon right in the middle of our component here. And the maximum for this particular component was 150 degrees C. So straight away we can see this is getting much too hot with no heat sink. No heat sink, 222 degrees, too hot. All right, you're going to damage something if you do this. All right, it will blow up, most likely, or it will, well, or it will shut itself down. It will never actually operate the way you want it to. Let's repeat the calculation, but assume that we are now going to solve for a heat sink. Okay, so this time we want to use a heat sink. So in this case, we're going to be using the second equation that we defined, where the junction, the thermal resistance from junction to ambient is made up of from junction to case plus from case to sink plus from sink to ambient. And we're going to substitute that back into this equation that we've got here. So Tj minus Ta is equal to theta Jc plus theta Cs plus theta Sa all times by or all multiplied by the power dissipation. Now assuming the same numbers again, 3.2, 30 degrees, uh, and let's say we've got theta from junction to case from the data sheet is 4, and as I said earlier, 2 is a conservative number for case to sink. There's two ways that we can now go about solving this problem. We can either say for a given junction temperature, what would be the thermal resistance of a heatsink required, or we can say for a given heatsink, what will be the junction temperature. I'm going to take the approach that we say, well, if we put 150 in here, so we operate this device right on the limit, right on the limit, which is bad, we don't want to do this, but let's just say, for interest's sake, we see that, and let's do this in blue, 20 equals 6 plus theta SA times by 3.2, and if we rearrange that, we're going to get 20 over 3.2 minus 6 is equal to theta SA, 20 divided by, oops, sorry, that's 120, not 20, 
So 120 divided by 3.2, I believe the number was. Yes, 3.2. Minus 6, and we see equals theta SA is equal to 31.5 degrees C per watt. Now, what does this number tell us? This number is now the maximum thermal resistance in order to operate our, our voltage regulator with a junction temp of 150 degrees C. All right, so that would be the maximum thermal resistance that we would uh, be able to use. So the second problem that we've solved here, first one was with no heat sink, and we saw we got too hot. The second one is we've solved for, well, what thermal resistance of a heat sink would be required to operate at 150 degrees. Remembering that was much too hot, but for argument's sake, what would that be? Now I've put here a heat sink that I found on element 14. And like most sinks, it actually states its thermal resistance. This is actually quite a small one. It's designed for the package that we've got, so it's perfect for what we need. So for the third calculation, given our thermal resistance from seat to atmosphere, which is the one given in the data sheet, determine what our junction temperature would be. Noting that this one is now 24 versus our previous one, uh, previous calculation is 31.5 so we should be well we will be a lower junction temperature but just how much lower will we be so let's substitute the values in again uh, and we'll rearrange the formula as we go so tj is equal to theta from junction to case plus theta from plus case to sink plus theta from sink to ambient times pd plus the ambient temperature Substitute in the numbers we know. We know junction to case was 4. We know case to sink was 2. And we know sink to atmosphere is 4 from the data sheet. Power dissipated was 3.2. And TA was 30. So we should get here. Uh, what are we going to get? We're going to get 30 times 3.2 plus 30. Which equals... 126 degrees C. So our junction temperature with the above heat sink will be approximately 126 degrees Celsius given the ambient temperature and the power dissipated that we have used. All right, now, is 126 all right? We come back up, we see, yes, that's less than the maximum junction temperature. However, I would still suggest that that's probably getting a bit hot. All right, preferably run components less than 100 degrees C, if you can. And the reason being is that as the temperature increases, the lifespan goes down. All right, so if you're trying to make this device last a long time, five to 10 years, operating at a higher temperature is going to push the lifespan down. All right, and you don't want to have any warranty problems because you're running too close to the maximum of this. So I'll leave you now to do the example again where you might say then, all right, well, we want a maximum junction temperature of let's say 80 degrees C. What would therefore a suitable uh, heat sink thermal resistance B. So that's using this version 2 calculation.